afternoon. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome back. Great day to be a day, Gus. Great little floater there. That will win the game. Quickly up the court. Pass it over to Ferguson. Ferguson. They're on a heater right now. I think they're feeling the crowd. Goes up to number two. Yeah. Wow, look at those skills. Emily. Oh, wow. In goal. Look at that. Oh. Beautiful behind the back. Oh, my gosh. You are watching EHS Live, home of the high school. Go Maroon. He finds one on field. It's John Rogers. It's a touchdown. I don't believe it. Welcome to the Humble Bowl for today's broadcast of Episcopal High School Girls Lacrosse versus St. Stephen's. Uh, this is a big game today, a uh, big crosstown rival game. Uh, from what I've been told, St. Stephen's has, well, Episcopal has never beaten St. Stephen's in a girls lacrosse game. That's all about to change today. I'm optimistic. I believe we, that today we will make history. This is a great girls squad. Uh, we score a lot of goals. We have a great goalie. What more could you ask for? But I am aware that um, St. Stephen's does have a UVA commit, Abby Mooser, number five, and a Cornell commit, number eight, Mason Manti. But we have some great players of our own all up and down the roster, and you're going to see that today. So this, this, this is a big day for the girls. Jason, how are you feeling today? I mean... The good thing about our team is, obviously, we're not scared for a challenge. Just because they have two Division One commits doesn't mean anything. Our Episcopal girls, they're ready for anything. They're ready for a challenge. Yeah, it's going to be a big day. But here's the national anthem. All right, yo, it's time to get our girls' lax on. It's time to get it started. It's a time good day to, get it started. to have a good day for a Episcopal High School Maroon. Yeah, it's a great day. It's a great day today. Who, who on our team do you think is a big player to watch, Jason? Well, uh, well a big player to watch every game, I'll say. Anya, Anya Everett, sophomore Anya Everett, my advisory sister, you know. She she's one of the best scorers I've seen play the sport. Yeah, you know. she's she's great. She's very athletic. Uh, she finishes well around the net and yeah. I mean, and she she was she was a basketball player in the winter too. 
I'm pretty sure y'all seen her before. So yeah, she's a pretty well-rounded athlete. Great athlete. Um, another another goal score today. Probably num- is going to be number eleven, Macaulay Vaughn. Yeah, she had a couple of big games this year, and when Anya um, was battling with with an injury, she was really one of the main people that I saw step up. So hopefully, with Anya back and close to fully healthy, we can see her shine shine as well. Yeah, we can't forget about uh, defensively, Keaton yeah. Galat at the goal. You know, she, she's goalie. got that huge. He was thick, and it's, she got it for a reason. What can I say, you know? Yeah. And then We shut down the goal. We score some. We're going to win this game. This is, we're going to make history today. today. Today's a big day. Today is a big day. Who do you? Another, another person that I'm, I'm, watch, I'm going to be watching kind of closely in the midfield, um, number 22. Oh. Lyle Crumley. Yeah, I was thinking that too. She's quick. We have a lot of we have a lot of great athletes. St. Stevens is pretty hyped up today. Yeah, we we have a lot of a lot of great athletes on this team. Yeah. All right, there. This chance gone on for a very long time. All right. They're not taking this seriously enough. They they must not know. Today, they must not know what we're coming for today. Today won't be just any easy game. Yeah, but um, as I was saying, uh, great, gr- three great athletes in the midfield today. Yeah. Uh, number, number twenty-two, Lyle Crumley. Number seven, Gracie Buxton, who's looking at, who's most likely going to check on, check in early. Um, and number twelve, Hope Fireson. Uh, Lyle and Gracie were really big on the field hockey season this year. Yeah. Uh, two great athletes, and Hope scored a lot of goals for girls soccer. So, well, hope we're looking forward to a great game. Who do you believe? Is gonna get the ball first between Anya and uh, number eight. Uh, is Mason, that Macy Manti? Mason Manti. Mason Cornell Manti. commit, but that's not gonna stop Anya. Let's see what happens. I haven't seen Anya lose a faceoff, and I hope I didn't jinx it right there. Let's see. I don't think you did. <coughs> and oh, per use stand. Uh, can we pick the ball up? I I don't know what that was just now. We give the ball okay, to the Maroons, so. As you said. We see number six. I think that's Winnie Hughes. She comes off. Um, and number seven, Gracie Buxton comes on. So Hope Fireson has the ball now. Running up down the field. She's free. Pass it back to Anya. Over to Lyle. That's Anna Gregg with the ball. I think our girls team is going to have to really – Play this one smart. Cause St. Stephen's is not a bad team. Yeah. As you know, as you said earlier, we've never beaten them. We might have to play this game differently than we've had in previous years. Yeah, and credit to St. Stephen's coach. She started this program all by herself all the way back in 1976. So it's a long program. And yeah. for them not to have lost the game to a crosstown rival who they play at least once every year and a lot of times and multiple times, gonna be yeah, it's pretty impressive very impressive so Anya now has the ball um, and the Maroons seem to be playing this one very very patiently setting off the offense this could be a potential way to throw off the so Saint Anya comes Stevens in hard defense and number five Abby Musser for St. Stevens gets a big takeaway and here's number 15 Tatum Spencer speeding down the field she's just holding her stick out no one's there to challenge her and That's Keating a with a big block. save. Sanat Baldwin, another great athlete, taking this one away. Sanat Baldwin, second in the state for uh, the 55 in the, in the winter. For so, yeah, the track. great athletes so. on this on this girls lacrosse team. Yeah, we're. I think that's going to be one of our biggest advantages. Yeah. We, we, we might have speed over a lot of teams in the ISL. Yeah. So, here's number 14, Lucy Nolan. Oh. Fighting off multiple defenders, drops one to her feet. And still with the ball. It's gonna find Anya around midfield. And very patiently. So I think this is gonna be this is what Coach Coach Boyam is kinda drawing up for today. New coach this year, new head coach at least. And well, probably no. I think McCauley that's Vaughn. Yeah, that's McCauley. Yeah. 
pretty close to the goal and they're sticking one close to her. Lyra now with the ball a little bit deeper out. She goes in, but she slowed down there. Here's number seven, Gracie Buxton. Seems to be that the St. Stephen seems playing some great defense. Yeah. I'm sure the last few games I've watched us play, we put up shots a lot earlier. Mm -hmm. and I, at the same time, I think we're playing a smart game right now. Yeah, not not trying to tire tire ourselves out and make careless mistakes. Here's Anya, looks to be making an attack. She stopped up, gets a shot off. That one looked good. Chasing after this ball, after this ground ball. Gracie picks it up. Oh, that's a hard yeah, foul from number seven. Really hard foul. But Gracie, Gracie gets up on her feet. It's great toughness from her. Taking her field hockey skills to lacrosse. Yeah. And seems to be very common theme on this team, yeah. Yeah, a lot of field hockey athletes on on this this team. Lyle patiently trying to make a pass, and that one's going to be a turnover. Number 15, Tatum Spencer comes up with it for St. Stephen's and goes off the field. Now number 20, Ellie L. Forsman has it coming up side of the field. Number three. Summer Brickley. Oh, that was a great play. Who was that who just scored? Oh, shoot. Probably number eight, yeah. Looks like number eight, Mason Manti. St. Stephen St. Agnes goal is scored by number eight, Mason Manti. Yeah. I mean, I won't three, lie. Summer that Brickley. was a nice assist from behind the goal. Yeah, right it happened so quick. Scored. I was looking to find the name of who said it, and goal got scored. But that's nothing for Keating. There's nothing Keating can't save for our team. Yeah. Seems to be some sort of exchanging of sticks. Not sure what the issue was. The Maroon have have another face off. Another opportunity to be great. Yeah, Anya is winning every face-off. I hope she will. Let's see what happens here. Ruff really trying to nestle that ball in between sticks. Not sure what the hold-up is. In reality, facing golf must be a really tough thing to do. It looks a lot easier than it is. All right, they have to something. All right, there we go. Oh, yeah. And Anya triple teamed off the face off, but the Maroon come up with it. Lyle Crumley has it. Switch Checked by again. two defenders, and they call the penalty. And often see as to what's going on. Number eight, Sophia Maglio, and Anya switching sticks mid game. It's a bit different. I think one might be a face off stick. Potentially. I know that's what they do in boys lacrosse, but I'm not sure. Here's Sana coming up very quickly, showing off that track speed. She's normally a defender, but often makes her trips around this side of the field. Yeah, Sana can shoot the ball too, as we know. Here's McCauley behind the goal. Let's see what she does. Pass it off to number 28, Anna Gregg. Gracie now with the ball. And this sticks up defense, as you could call it, from from St. Stephen's. Smothering the inside of the field. It's hard for the Maroon to, to kind of penetrate that and create some space, create some movement. We might have to get a little assist play going. Yeah. Close to the goal. I think one thing that might open it up. Oh, oh. Anya just trying to oh. split through the defense. They call some sort of penalty. Ruff's not allowing for too much contact. Here's number six, Winnie Hughes coming onto the field. So he might be flexing her and Ooh. Gracie Buxton. Ooh, that's how it bounds. It's going to be Maroon mm -hmm. Ball. That was a really a brave play by Anya just now. I think she held the ball. She held the ball in her stick for a, 
second longest she could have scored that one right there. Yeah, but I think they called her for some sort of some type of penalty. Called her for some sort of penalty. Yeah, yeah maybe. So nah, this would be a triple team, but splitting, trying to split the defense. Ref blows the whistle. So now picks it back up. So it must be a room ball. Oh no, that's a turnover. Got to get back on defense. Got to get back on defense. And St. Stevens has an advantage here. Going to slow it down, number nine with the ball. Over number eight, now number five. Abby Musser. Yeah, our defense, our defense is gonna, is really gonna win this game for us. Yeah, they're gonna have to, but yeah. they're also gonna have to kind of get some quick takeaways and yeah. push it up the field. Yeah, we need, we need to, we're gonna do some good work on both sides. Yeah. I, have, I got faith in us. I think the fast break is gonna be the easiest way to kind of combat this sweltering St. Stevens defense. Yes. Today, to pass in from St. Stevens and. Hope Fireson comes away with it, but the rest blow the whistle. So, Mason Manti has it at the top of the circle. I think they're lining up for a penalty shot here. See if Keating can save it. This kind of is one, in my opinion, one of the most interesting plays in, in all the sports. The the girls' penalty. It's a goal for. Um, Mason Manti once again. Yeah. Lacrosse, specifically girls lacrosse, one of the more like complicated Mason sports for me. Like all the, yeah. all the cards and the fact that the game just moves so fast. The fact that it's not super, super uh, televised makes it kind of hard for people like us to just kind of pick up on the rules on the fly because it seems like they just call penalties for for whatever. Yeah. But it's a really interesting sport. Actually, the, the first time, my first time watching it was when I came to it. Yeah. And it was a, it's a really interesting sport. I had seen some college boys lacrosse. Yeah. Um, But lacrosse is one of those sports where it's like you don't play it everywhere. It's only in like this area of the United States. It's Maya it's comes up with another face off, but they call yeah. some sort of penalty once again. I believe she hit it. Oh, I couldn't tell you what happened. Yeah. Who knows? But, yeah. Like you were saying, only in certain parts of, like, the country. Yeah. This is, this is where lacrosse is very popular. A very and niche we, sport. but And we so happen to be in that section of the country. Yeah. And I'm grateful for that. So. It's very interesting sport to kind of learn. Mason Manti with a great move here. Hands it off to number oh. five. Abby Musser and those two. It's close. It's gonna be a dynamic duo today. I can already, I can already tell. Yeah, I mean, it's not the, it's not the best thing for the basketball team, but I think we're really need, we're gonna need to step up and and press press Mason Manti and and yeah. uh, Abby Musser really hard this mm -hmm. game. Mason Manti has already contributed on all three points scored today. Two goals and. One assist. Yeah, and we're, so. We still have time left to play in this first quarter, so. Good stuff out of her, but All see right. if the room can turn it around. This is only the beginning. This is. Yeah, this is. Uh, the game's not over by any means. No. Maroon kind of need a goal here, though. I we need to get something big. started. Just get some, some life into the offense. Get a. A decent shot, and this ref seems to be struggling with the face-off once again. This face-off is also another confusing concept of this sport. Yeah. And uh, she gets it again. Oh, almost. Yeah, this maroon uh, St. Stephen's team is very good. Yeah, you got to give it to them. Number nine drops that pass. Here's Winnie Hughes. Coming up with it. Another great athlete on this team, and she yeah. loses the ball there. Oh. Hustling Winnie. back, though. Number 20 now, um, Ellie Forsman with the ball. 
I believe Winnie Hughes is also on the field hockey team. Yeah, freshman standout. Yeah. We covered one of those games this fall, and I think she had a goal in that one. So, in, from what I've been seeing, St. Stephen's offense has a lot more light than the Maroon one. Just kind of passing yes. it around the horn. This was looking Seeing like. what will open up if they keep this ball moving, I think the Maroon can, can take, some fr take something from this. This is to create so much more opportunities uh, for people to get involved like this. Yeah. It's a good opportunity from them right there, but good defense yes. from the Maroon. Oh. Number 10, Caroline Bruns, loses her stick, but gets back in the play. Two minutes to play in the quarter. Two minutes. St. Stephen's still passing it around the horn. See, someone makes a move. No shot clocking, girls lacrosse, too. Here's number 21, so Chloe Lambert. Good shot from her. I'm not sure what the assist was from. St. Stephen's hand is scored by number 21. St. Stephen's, Stephen's offense. Time to go, one minute, 43 seconds. They're, they're on to something. Score. They're on to something really early in the game. And I feel like that's something that's really important in sport like lacrosse. I always thought of lacrosse to being a low-scoring game. But every time I hear from, like, players on the team, scores is like 15-4. And yeah. like our Woodbury game the other day. And when, it's, when it game. is low-scoring, that means... There's some sort of great goalie play going on. Yeah. Or just like a defensive shutout because they get a lot of shots up. Yeah. So. And I think that's what the Maroon probably need most of right now, just getting some opportunities. When you shoot the ball, eventually it's going to go in. Yeah. But I haven't seen. Too many shots. Yeah. I don't, maybe. I don't I've think. Maybe seen one. So. Yeah. It's tough to win a game like that. And. St. Stephen's is taking advantage of the shots that they can put up. And they're putting up points messy early. Messy face-off here, but Lyle Crumley comes up with it. Sophia Maglio and Anya switch sticks here. Lyle, three defenders on her, yeah. trying to find someone open to pass to, and she breaks through it herself. They may need to slow this one down. I'm, I like this though. It's it's creating chaos um, with the St. Stephen's defense, and that's something that they're gonna need need a lot more of. Yeah, that's a fair point, Mick. Like when they're standing around like this, it's it's hard to score. Like in any sport, when yeah, it's really stagnant. You gotta. There are no opening gaps. You gotta get some motion going on. Here's Anna Gregg at the top of the key. Guard very tightly. Oh. Makes someone fall to the ground. Can get a shot up. That's they a call safe. a penalty on someone, but hmm. I believe it's on the Saints. So the Maroon will get this is a penalty, a shot. penalty shot. See who takes it. I think it's Anna Gregg. Yeah, number 28, oh, yeah. Anna Gregg. This ball is just going everywhere. Everywhere but to where it needs to be. It's fine, though. In a few seconds, it'll be right where it needs to be, the back of that goal. So she's taking it from from an angle. Whistle's blown. What? Doesn't get the shot up in time. Did one of the other players hit that stick or something? I think so, but I believe that's allowed. So here's yeah. end of the first. I think my biggest takeaway from, from this quarter is you just gotta get some motion in the offense. Yeah, pretty. I'm interested in what Coach Boyum and uh, Coach Phillips are gonna tell, tell players on the team. Yeah. Because, I mean, I don't think it's low energy on the field at all. As you've seen before the game, they were pretty hyped up. Yeah. I think. I mean, it could be the weather. The weather's a little down. No sun. So. It's a cold day, but at the same time. He's got to play through it. There's a boys lacrosse game going on right now. I'm interested to see. Where is that being held at? I think it's on Greenway Field, so another side of campus. But St. Stephen's getting getting some motion in their offense today. I think that the Maroon can replicate that and lead to a victory. So we'll see where this where this takes us. But 
this is a big opportunity for for the Maroon to kind kind of pounce back, get their get their thoughts together. Because I don't know if there's no timeouts, but no timeout has been called, no stoppage of play. It's the first time that since the beginning of the game where the coaches can kind of get together and have a conversation. But it's an interesting point you make. What do you think they're talking about in this huddle right now? Um, I believe this has to be has has to do a lot with. Uh, well, I see him dropping a bottle on the floor. I'm thinking picking up the ball from the floor. But being more aggressive, yeah, with ground balls. Yeah, maybe. But at the same time, I don't think they've been doing that bad with that. Yeah. But I, I think you can always, if it's a 50-50 play and you want to win the game, the results of that can't be 50-50. Yeah. I think maybe maybe the big problem or the, what they're talking about is being more aggressive when you're on the opposing side of the field. Yeah. And trying to get that goal. Yeah. Know? Wanting it more. Wanting it more the other team. Yeah. And just, I'm not sure what the rules allow for, but just trying to, in basketball, they always say to pass and kick. And this could work out in lacrosse, too. Drive and kick. Yeah. Um, that's what I meant to say. Uh, just just get to the middle, penetrate the, penetrate the defense, and create opportunities for your teammates. Yeah. I'm not too sure if, uh, Sophomore Symphony James is out with injury or not. Yeah, I know she was. She's been battling something I, I all season. And an ankle or somewhere on the foot. Yeah. Injury. And that could be playing a bit, pretty big role. I'm pretty sure she's got her practice jersey on. Yeah. Right and in sweatpants, and she's normally a big part of this team. Yeah. She's a, she's a really tough player too. Another member of our winter track team. So. So let's see how the Maroon do. We need to find a way to turn yeah, this one around. Point. I yeah. mean, it looks to be like they're trying something new, having Lala Crumley at faceoff. And and, I've and there's hope around the, the faceoff circle, too. So maybe they're going to be more aggressive on these. There's not too much to lose. You're down 4-0. You can't really afford to go down that another goal. Yeah. At the same time, you got to start putting on goals fast. You want to cut this lead? <laughs> Ideally, cut this lead to two by halftime, and just make it a more manageable game for the second half. And what this face-off strategy allows for is just some chaos to be created. And our defense is still able to get set up here, so number eight Mason Manny, she's going in on Lyle Crumley, pass it off. To Abby Musser, and that's a goal, but I've, called I heard back. a whistle get called. Is there a penalty shot? So, yeah. So, Abby Musser is going to be around this penalty circle, and let's see. She scores here. Why do you give the penalty shot if she made the goal? And she scores. Well, guess I didn't mean anything. Stevens Hanag's goal was scored by number five, Abby Musser. Time to go 11 minutes, 16 seconds of the second quarter. Yeah, I believe, is this Abby Musser's? This is her second goal. Second goal. And I'm not sure she had an assist on the last one to um, Chloe Lambert. I didn't really catch who it was, but yes. uh, she has two goals. Yeah. Mason Manning gets three go uh, two goals and an assist. Yeah, they're they're playing really aggressive right now, and and here's Sana coming off for first time today. Maybe they're giving her a breather. Can't tell. Can't tell who, but because normally she's a staple in this yeah. this more in defense. Just kind of let her clear her head. So Anya's back on the faceoff. We yeah. see if we can go back to what works and. Yep. Oh. We should have came up with the ball there, but Chloe Lambert, number 21 for St. Stephen's, very, very aggressive, aggressive on yes. the ground ball. And here's number five, Abby Musser, I think out to the wing. That's where. Six. That's what we're lacking. Yeah. That's what we're lacking. We're lacking this aggressiveness. Yes. Like we need to show that fight. Each faceoff, I've noticed, even though we might have gotten some of them. Like St. Stephen's is not stopping. And once we get, even if once we pick the ball up, there's always there's always three people, three girls, yeah, on, on the ball, right away. 
So it seems to be that St. Stephen's has a little strategy going on. It's good defense here from number six, Winnie Hughes. And a great shot from number two, Lillian Israel. 6-0 now. It's her first goal of the game. Yeah. As I was saying earlier, she simply found a gap, a huge gap. Uh, that our Episcopal defense was not was not covering at all, and she took advantage of the moment. All she has to do is get the ball past the goalie. She did it. They created chaos. Yeah. Took advantage of it. I'm not going to say it's simple, but they're doing what we need to do. We, yeah. You can tell them to do it all they want, but the players have to decide within them that they're going to be the one to be aggressive. And I'm not sure if the refs are holding them back from that or what, but got to be a little bit more aggressive here. And Anya genuinely lost the face off for the first time I've seen. Yeah. All season. So here's number five, Abby Musser, who looks very quick coming up down the middle of the field. Number 33 gets the ball. I can't believe I've seen her on me. Yeah. Here's Abby Musser. Great defense from number eight, Sophia Maglio. Yeah. And a great See. shot from Chloe Lambert. It's, it sounds simple, and it might be simple for her. St. Stephen's, but it's not as simple as we think it is. As you can see, Abby Musser has pretty good, pretty good footwork, and she simply took a few steps, passed it out, and got the shot in. Yeah. I believe that they're changing. Sticks yeah, again. They saw sticks. Who's facing off? Not sure. I think it's oh. gonna be number nine, Campbell oh. Allen. So yeah, maybe we're we can get some height in here. Try a new approach. I also don't understand this either. Yeah, why are they Being facing the same this side? Way? Yeah. It's a little bit confused about. I've seen it a couple times and never understood it. This strategy. It seems like the maroon aren't even facing to go to their goal. The ball goes backwards. Mason Manti. That's the aggressiveness I've been yes. waiting for all day. Just putting pressure on the ball. Abby Musser is just a little bit too quick. And that breakaway speed that if you have that in the cross, oh, yeah. you can go pretty far. Oh. That's... Pretty much going to be out of bounds. Our ball. Turnover for St. Stephen's. So, great defense in the room. Uh, number yeah. 14, Lucy Nolan picks that one up. Is that a penalty on 33? I believe so. Yeah, it's a pretty good job on getting the stick up. St. Stephen's St. Agnes penalty on number 33, Anna Strauss. That might have not been a bad thing. You know, we've had, we just had a little bit of momentum coming our way, and she just stopped that. And I'm pretty sure that means some man down. Yeah. I think we have an open body right here, number 12, Hope Farson. Yeah. Let's be aggressive here. So. Let's be aggressive. This is where we work. Wow, Crumbly. Uh, yeah. Swallowed up by three St. Stephen's defenders. And that's sort of been a theme. Every time I've seen Lyle with the ball. Someone's There's around her. Jump on her. This is the opportunity. She has three people on her now. They're gonna pass it back to Sanaa. She's gonna use that speed to get get past this line of defense from St. Stephen's and it's a good look for the Maroon. gonna get the ball back. Patiently set up the offense. Here's a good look. She yeah. loses it, but that's a penalty. Yeah. Who they call it on? I believe that's on whoever oh, it's was. It's a yellow. Yellow card, so. What does a yellow card mean? I'm not sure, but I think they're putting her in the box. Yeah. 
Kate Stevens, St. Agnes County, at number 35, Emily Alperstein. Is this a penalty shot right now? So they have two in the box. Anya's going from that side angle. I think she could take one or two steps in and just get a shot off. I think that's what she's going to do. No one's checking her. Maybe she could dish it off to McCauley, but I think she's going to take the shot. She's pushed. That's a great shot. And one. That is a great shot from a great athlete and my advisory sister, Anya Everett. It's a great call. And who knows? You got to start somewhere. You got to start somewhere. The only way we can go up is well, the only way we can go. Put him on the board. So, the Maroon are on the board. We're going to go back to Campbell. Campbell Allen taking the face offs. Yeah, and that was. She took a pretty tough hit. Yeah. You know, and she still managed to, to make that goal. And that's the toughness that. Anya, Anya comes with, and it, honestly, you see that on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. So let's see if the Maroon can replicate that play, because that that's what we've been waiting for all game, just some some motion in the offense, some fluidity, and it led to a goal. We have, we have the talent. Yeah. We just have to be more aggressive. Here's number two, Lillian Israel with the ball on the wing. You know, one of the things I always thought about is the fact that they have no pockets in their sticks. Yeah. So it's very hard to run around. And I think that's part of the reason why they don't allow for stick checks because you so knock that stick, it's... The ball's falling out yeah. no matter what. So I think it's really impressive the fact that these girls had like learned how to perfect... Yeah. Yes. And sometimes you'll even see them running up the middle of the field just holding their stick in front of them, yeah. letting the ball balance in there. And that's something that it takes a while to get used to. It's it's definitely a skill. Yeah. So here's Winnie pressing up high. High on the high on the ball. Great aggressiveness from like, his defense. Although we're pressing. Mm. It's working out right yeah, now. It, it does. It, it is working out. Like we have the athletes to keep up with them. It's. It's just do we have, the depth? Do we have, uh, the will to win that they they've displayed so far? <laughs> you know we're pressing, but St. Stephen's does not look phased at all. Still going around the horn, but we're pushing them farther out away from the goal. They haven't got they close to the goal. Replicated the same play. Uh, they haven't got it's close to the goal right in a minute. Around. I feel like we, we keep pushing them farther and farther out. Passing it out to the left. Back to the left. She looks to be about... Here's Lambert now. Yeah, this, is their third out. Time. this is their third time around. Eventually, they'll be out of bounds. That back side. We're 20, 30 yards out here, so... Finally, a move from number eight, Mason Mant Manti. Yeah, our, our this is this is a good-looking defense for our Episcopal girls right now. And there's a the takeaway. Yeah, we forced we forced the turnover. So it took a while. It took about two minutes, but eventually worked out. So Lyle swallowed up once again. Yep. By Every a horde of St. Stephen's defenders. We just need somebody to get out there, and slow Aya down. And comes on the field, see slow if they can get it to oh, her. Yeah. She can use that speed to get into the box and maybe get a shot off. Nope. Her path She's is deterred, but she runs around and gets a good shot oh, off. That's, that's a, a great shot. save. It's a great save from uh, number 43. And the ball is still on the ground. Picked up by 24. St. Stevens, number 24, Meg Adams. <laughs> and here's a fast break from them. Meg Adams sprinting down the field. But we have enough girls back to hold them off for right now. Here's number 21, Chloe Lambert. She's been, she's had a great day. Yeah. I'm not even sure where the ball is right now. I think it's a number five oh, yeah. stick, yeah. 
Here's number th 33. This is the usual slow offense that that St. Stevens has, play has been playing his whole game. Yeah, almost 30 seconds now, taking off the clock. Maybe not so low, more so patient offense that they play. And here's some chaos. Here's some chaos. A lot of goals, a lot of shots are taken in the midst of chaos, but pull back out and they're going to call a penalty on someone. Couldn't imagine who that's on. It's going to be on the maroon. Mason Manthe just going to pull it out and they're going to play their slow, slow, methodical game. Oh, <laughs> see someone she was, was open in the middle. One. Pass wasn't able to be made. Let's see who can come up with this ground ball. A lot of whistles being blown. Still, the Saints moving slow. Yeah. It's like they're moving slow, and then when we least expect it, they get a hard they push. Just pounce right into the middle. I think this is about to be it. Yep. Oh. Mason Manti in the middle. But our defense has been. They've been holding they've been down a little bit in the second quarter. So, credit to them. Number five, Abby Musso gets a great shot off. Assisted by number two. Simply just found an open spot. Yeah. Took it right to our advantage. King Stevens St. Agnes goal scored by number five, Abby Musser. Off an assist from number two, Lily of Israel. Time to roll at three minutes, 23 seconds of the second quarter. So. Eight to one now. There's three minutes left on left in this half. And I'm from where we are in this press box, we can't see the clock. So but I think it's three twenty three right now. I'm interested in what this second half is going to look like for our preschool girls. Yeah. You know, it seems to be from the first quarter, they definitely have improved. And, oh. It's a great face-off win from, from Aya. Yeah, from the first quarter, we've definitely, like, improved, changed some things up. So there might be a momentum change in our second half of this game. Here's Anya, her pass over to number seven, Gracie Buxton. I haven't seen her in for a while, I don't think. Here's Lyle coming off the pass from Anya. Trying to make a move on this defender. I don't think she has anything. Gotta find a good pass. Anna Gregg, number 28, has it now. Pass it back to Lyle. And number four playing great defense. That's number four, Maddie Moore for St. Stephen's. Playing good defense. Yeah, she's been working. And they find McCauley. McCauley's another great athlete. It's a common theme for this team. Yeah. I mean, after all, this is an athletic sport. And in the ground ball battle, number 15, Tatum Spencer. And they're going to give the ball to to the Saints. I'm not sure what, why they gave the ball to the Saints, but they did. Two minutes to play in the half. Two minutes. And now there's two minutes left here in the second half. Oh, second quarter. Oh, yeah, in the second quarter. Chloe Lambert with the ball over to Mason Manti. They're slinging it around the horn and inching closer every time. So I think that, that press that we ran for one defensive stand... Yeah. It was really working. And I'm not sure where that went. Because now we're just kind of allowing them to do whatever they want. They're inching closer. Only about 10 yards out. But with that press, we had them catching the ball around the 30. But here's Abby Muster trying to find a pass to Mason Manti. Manti picks her up off the ground. Yeah. Finds Chloe Lambert over the middle. Will she get a shot off? And like... Keating it's having coming, a tough day. It's getting to a point where, like, 
I feel like if I Saint Stephen's head angle goal scored by number twenty. I've I've noticed a common theme. Time goal, one minute, so of the throw it around the horn, and it coming right through the middle from that back left side of the goal. Yeah, and this Episcopal defense. Hopefully, we can get a shot of that. Um, yeah, they're having a quick conversation, just trying to get their head straight. Cause, and the thing is, I know we all know they know that they're better than this, and this is not a challenge. For, well, yeah, it might look like it, but this is just, and, just another game. Yeah, and for in a sport like this, one a one on one shot with the goalie, um, for a lot of, for at this level of play it seems to be like the goalie really stands no chance so it's up to that defense to kind of fortify and make it tough for yeah person on offense to get a clear shot up and Anya wins this face off and I think they should just push it here it's only yeah. one minute left in this half you've got nothing to lose at this point they just push it be uber aggressive I don't know if they're allowed to leave nobody back but if they could just do that. Here's Lucy Nolan spinning through, spinning through the defense. Stop here. She seems to be finding she an still open. Still has it. 29, 27 seconds left in. In the half. We've got to get some type of shot up. And I think that 30-yard mark is where. They can't go past. They can only have, a, I think, six people ahead of it at a time. Here's Hope Firesan being aggressive. Eight uh, seconds left. Let's see what they do. They need a shot here. McCauley needs to make a pass, and I think she's going to hold it out until the end of the yeah. first half. And that is the end of the first half. Move the score. St. Stephen's and St. Agnes School Saints 9. Central High School Maroon 1.
Um, we're back again for the second half of this game. Interested to to know what the that halftime speech was like. You know, they say nine one is a it's a lethal score in the cross. So, um, really, yeah, I didn't know that. I never heard that one before. Never heard that one. I mean, that's um, a, that's a source to say. So, but I'm interested to see some some new faces get in this game. I remember when we were winning pretty pretty well. Uh, what was that Tuesday? Um yeah. Wait, well, I believe I think it was Tuesday versus Trinity Christian. I think we lost that game. Oh, we lost? Yes. Really? Yes. They did. Weren't we up a lot though early? Yeah, we were up, but I asked somebody on the team. Oh. They told me they lost, but I don't know, they might have been joking. Oh, no, it wasn't. But I don't probably did lose. They, yeah, we probably did lose. Well, I, I saw some some of the bench get in earlier. And yeah. The bench doesn't look like they're going to be getting in anytime soon, which is sad. tough to see. Yeah. But, yeah. But I think, well, for one, we're going to need to turn things around, like, a lot, like, a huge reverse. Because, well, we haven't been playing a – Terrible game at all. We just haven't got. Yeah, we haven't, we haven't had got any turnovers. A lot of. Yeah. I've seen like one turnover that we've like got, but they we've committed a lot. And at the same time, offensively, we're not getting a lot of opportunities. And as you can see, defensively, they're practicing passing the ball on us. Yeah, you're slinging it around the horn. So we're gonna have to, but. I mean, it, it could be a dangerous move running up. So let's see. Seems to get some more motion now, but they also look like they're running a drill. So yeah. A lot of cross motion. And I think that's a turnover. Yep. So it's a good one. Took about a minute and a half, but we got. They're really takeaway. running the clock. Yeah. That's what it is. And they're draining it. They're and it's they're scoring. It's interesting. They're being very efficient. It's interesting because why run the clocks so early in the game? And we get and another here's turnover. a turnover and fast break. But like they've been really efficient in their their kind of half field set, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Like once they get there, slow the game down. Who were you talking about, St. Stevens? Yeah. yeah. They get there, slow the game down, and convert on most of their attempts. Yeah. If we've got a couple of saves and then either turn the ball over or go down having an unsuccessful try on their end. It would be nice to hear, to have a conversation with St. Stephen's coach as to their, pro their thought process on like why they do this uh, around the horn thing. I think it's just a time wasting thing because there they just took off a minute of the clock before someone even started sprinting. Yeah, I mean, I guess. I think like, they caught him for a penalty there, too. So. Like you said earlier, there's no shot clock, so they could literally sit there all day. Yeah, and here's Chloe Lambert. One on one with the goal. Oh. oh it's a different one. Interesting try. So we get the ball back. And 
they get the ball. Is that back. a turnover? I believe so. Yeah, so careless mistakes. Yeah, we like I know I understand it's cold outside. I mean But the temperature doesn't change for for them as well. Yeah. Well it's cold for both of at us. At the same time, I do give credit to the girls. I couldn't do this yeah. in this weather. Yeah, I play an indoor sport, so Yeah, I mean even Can't say anything. Even running even walking in the outdoors. Yeah, and then as soon as you finish your your ten second race Yeah. Go back inside. Being that I did run a Okay. <laughs> Alright. Anyways. So some more motion for the Saints. Yep. Oh. That's turnover. a great stop from uh, Lucy Lucy Nolan and that gets the bench very yeah. excited. They have an opportunity to slow things down, but at the same time, we gotta speed it up. Just speed it up, yeah. Being careless with the ball, with the ball, yeah. Man, oh yeah, oh yeah, no. That that pressure from St. Stephens is just swallowing us up. Caroline Bruns, she can't even can't even get the ball off the ground. So I'm sure they'll be doing a lot of ground ball practice. Yeah, tomorrow. Like, what St. Stephen's is doing, or isn't doing, that we are doing is like, they aren't making this like simple mistakes. Like, ground balls. I'm sure that's like a fundamental thing in girls across, boys across. Is that a timeout? I, I believe so. Oh, so there are timeouts. Yeah, ground balls. Like I said, essential in the game. Yeah. It's like a chess pass in basketball. It's like a layup in basketball. Really like a loose ball, but yeah. Oh. Yeah. I I, I mean like it's essential at yeah. the end of the day. But it, it's a fifty fifty play most of the time, and you can't win a game being fifty fifty. That's how you tie. Tight. You always you always have to gotta win those opportunities and take them back. And we're struggling with that right now. And yeah. It, and what my analysis would be. Is it looks like St. Stephen's isn't that tired. No. Either super conditioned or they aren't that tired. And I I think part of the reason might be is once they're in that, that half court set, they're kind of just there. Yeah, I mean. They get to catch their breath for about a minute. That's a long time. And then and then they start doing stuff. Yeah. And then, the, then with that, they're able to just put on the pressure in transition and create opportunities, but yeah, it's gonna be a big time out for the girls. And it, it sucks that like we're gonna have to we're gonna have to like exert all of our energy and play our best game as hard as possible in order to score in order to score against this uh, St. Stephen's defense while they're yeah. just while they just have. They have enough room to make a few mistakes, yeah. but not too many. I wonder almost, whose ball it is. I believe it's. Hmm. I don't know. It, this one's. I think it's gonna be Saint Stephen's ball. This one's tough. Yeah. It's, it's tough to have a Saint game Stephen's like this, ball. and it's like. You have that feeling they're like probably gonna lose this game. We haven't won, when did we start admitting girls in the 90s? I believe so. It's been 30 years. That's tough, and especially because they're just so close. It's it, that's. I know for me that would be a big motivation, but it's also hard at the same time feeling like you're just the constant underdog. Yeah, no, definitely. Like, it's good I'm, defense. I'm in, how how close was the score last year? I couldn't even tell you. Yeah, but it's the thing is we have we have so many athletes on our team. Yeah, it's a it's and, a very athletic team. And I don't know if. I don't know if we're not taking advantage of our athletes or for overworking our athletes. 
I don't know what's a better way to take advantage of the athleticism you do have besides just that's great pressure from number 12 Hope Fires and just pushing him out but I, I think the the only way I've been always told to just kind of look at lacrosse like it's like it's basketball yeah. just in the way that you can kind of slow it down and then speed it up in transition I think with good conditioning I know it's uh, and yeah, there's a shot from that's... Chloe Lambert Oh, that's her fourth today. It's double digits for St. Stephen's now. Um. And I, I, I don't know, because it's, it's most definitely a bigger field. Yes. Yeah. I mean, same uh, size. Five minutes, 39 seconds of yeah. I, I think you can just run in transition, but this field is 100 yards. It's a football field. Yeah. Imagine sprinting back and forth on. A football field. Yeah. Um. I feel for Keating, our goalie, 33 Keating, because I know she's trying. I know she, she works hard at this sport and she loves it. Yeah. And I mean she's missed classes for tournaments, but today hasn't been a great day. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's sad to see. Tough. Yeah. Make sure we got the ball. And we need to take advantage of this right now. On you. So here's Anya going straight through there's, there's no the way. defense in. Okay. Never mind. And I'm not sure why, in a situation like that, what's the need to blow the whistle? Yeah. And you just kind of slow down a lot of the momentum and take away. The advantage that we do have. And as you can see, St. Stephen's and here's gets the ball Lambert. again. She's having herself a day and Ooh. slows it down, pulls it out. Swing it to the corner behind the net. And we're just going to go around the horn. Yeah. It's just it's, tough. It's becoming to get. It's getting repetitive too. Yeah. Like it's seen over and again. I mean, it's like you. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. If you challenge one of these passes, and you're unsuccessful. There's an opening. It opens up a lane. Yeah. So. And the fact that they go back, and, like, they go in both clockwise and counterclockwise, and sometimes they cross. They cross. But each the other most too. effective thing was when we. We weren't going in the passing lanes. We were just up on the man. Yeah. Like, give him some type of pressure. Yeah. Don't just watch him. And I guess in this same cross play that they've been doing. They're just running a bunch of, like, And we need to pressure off. It seems to be that we need to. Well, it looks like we need to press up. But I am not a lacrosse player, so. I'm not sure, like, what the appropriate strategy would be to, like, go against this, because... It's an interesting one. Let's see. It's been... This is the longest I've seen them do this for. Yeah. It's been nearly and it's two working, minutes, and that's just a qu quick little flip. I think that number three to number two. Yeah. I mean, Wow. There's nothing you can it's say. Good at this stuff point. from the coach. So yeah, this is great coaching, and this is from a coach who's, who's made this program all on her or his own. Because, as we learned earlier, like this is started from scratch, and I'm to, to develop your when, players like this. Wonder when we'll get some subs for St. Stevens. Just a well, five new faces subs out. Well, I guess here it is. It's number 41, first time. Number 13 for the first time. I mean, it, it felt like, it felt like, I hear a lot of yelling. Oh, uh, it felt like first half, even when they had a big, a big lead, St. Stephen was showing no mercy. And even to start this quarter, uh, they showed no this mercy. Court. 
Only scored, what, two goals here in the past 10 minutes. He's good defense, but we can't. Yeah. I haven't seen us have a minute of possession in our, in our half. Yeah. Okay. Seems like they're just kind of winding nice it down nice and board. slow, but nice. still good energy from this team and good spirits, and they're still it's playing. Nice. It's up. Playing hard, which you like to see. Yeah. And so yeah. everyone for the Maroon is with the 50 yard line, except for number eight, Sophia Maglio, and the goalie. And there's a turnover from Lucy Nolan. Breakaway, number nine, but Anya gets Anya. back quick. Wow. That's some real speed right there. And I think she, her and Sina uh, at some point will probably switch off. There we go. Yeah. <coughs> Just slow, methodical play from St. Stevenson. <sighs> Back to the old. Around the horn. Yeah. And now the movement starts. Scully Lambert guarded tight by Anya. This looks like more of the defense. A little bit that we need. A Let's see if we can just hold them off for this quarter. 30 seconds left on the clock. Good defense from Maglio. And... Since Stevens, they have an opportunity. Chloe Lambert. Wow. What's that for her today? I think that's her fifth. Yeah. And, like, the, the players, St. Stevens is finding, they're finding open people. Like, it's it's hard enough to be a player to find an opening yourself, but as, an, like, another player giving an assist to find somebody else who also finds that opening is you. Yeah, it ain't in the easy. Third quarter with the score at the St. Stephen's and St. Agnes School of Saints 12, Fiscal High School, Maroon 1. And these girls have to be frustrated. It's, yeah. it's inevitable. I mean, it's never. We haven't had. I don't even think their goalies really had a save. I think it's just. I think I don't even think they've. Uh, our one shot's off a penalty. How many shots have we put up besides that penalty? I could probably Maybe. count them on one hand and. I don't recall any. I could probably count them on one finger. That's tough. Yeah. And it feels like not everything's ended with a turnover, but it's just they stop it up. Or it's like a penalty they give it to the other team. Yeah. More so. It must be stressful for these girls, obviously. I mean, to come off school, you know, excited for your game. It's a cold day. Cold day, yeah. Some some of these girls probably had tests. End of the semester. I mean, end of the quarter coming up. You know. And so. then you have to finish this game and study for more tests. Yep. It's tough. So you, so you just got to move on. But it's, and it's never easy to just move on from. Yeah. I'm, I know I'm cold and I'm sitting inside of a press box and it must yeah. be cold out on this field, so. But, I mean, this last quarter speech must just be, uh, if I'm coach, I'm telling my girls or my players, just have fun. You know, work hard, try as hard, you know you're good, have fun. Yeah. Don't let, don't let this game stress you out. Because who knows, you know. Yeah, who knows. We can come back. There, there are still how many minutes? Twelve. Twelve minutes left. Twelve yeah. minutes left in the game. Max, Max, change the quarter. Change the quarter. Look, look on the thing. It says first. Make it fourth. Yeah, but it's tough. And it must be even more tough just the girls not getting much time today. Yeah, I mean, 
I don't see why it's crazy to like <clears throat> not to unless they're battling with an injury or something but just kind of I say like why not try out you know try putting in a actually I guess we only have one like real is Fiona hurt also I can't tell if they're just it's wearing just sweatpants or or I mean hoodies or I mean they're cold. Dory hasn't gotten in the game yet. She's a goalie too. He's a great field hockey goalie. I don't yeah, feel I'm like there'd be a, some sort of correlation, but I guess it's different. Yeah. Different. So I believe this is on yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've we have to we can't show them that we're that we're like losing energy though. Yeah. Still twelve minutes to play. Twelve minutes. To score 12 goals, that's a goal a minute. Yeah, we're only well, 15 seconds in. 12 minutes to score 11 goals, really. All we gotta do is tie the game. <coughs> and, but St. Stephen's offense isn't gonna allow us at this time, so we're gonna have to. <laughs> when we get our opportunities, we're gonna have to make the most of them. Yeah. There's good pressure from us, but feels like we're just kind of there. Oh, it's a shot. Good save from Keating. Can we pick up the ground ball? That might be one of the first misses I've seen in this no, game. No, we can't. And are we going to get a penalty shot? Looks like it. I'm interested to see what's the plan here. I think this Carolyn Shiler taking this one. Will she shoot? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's just this is a tough one. She scores and they're hugging her like it and must be her first goal of the season. Seems Looks like it must be. Scored by number thirteen, Carolyn Skyler. Number 13 minutes, scores the 13th goal. The now we need 12 goals. It's ties the game. 12 goals in 10 minutes. Yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to sound like that guy, but we're gonna need to step this up. <laughs> I I think. Well, I, I believe in us. I I still have faith. I always have faith in our EHS girls. I don't even care about win or lose. Let's get some goals on the board. Yeah. Let's have some fun with it. I I feel like our girl our girls I feel like our girls aren't having fun. Yeah. I just wanna make a quick shout out to my sister, Shanae Abraham. Okay. She's currently watching the stream. Yep. Uh I'll see you in a few months. Months? Yes, because I won't be home until yeah. I guess it is that time of year where Pearson, oh, here's an attack. There's some sort of chaos. Let's, oh, she gets smacked upside the head. Oh, yeah, take her out of the game. Like, pull some sort of card. I think that's her second yellow. Oh, yeah, look at, look, look at Coach Boyum. Looks a little angry. Oh. Illegal stick check. Time of the penalty, 8 minutes, 46 seconds. Who's getting this penalty? Oh no, no penalty shot. You just have it around the about 20 yards out. I mean, at this point, it doesn't hurt to just pull one from deep. But then again, then again, with with all these defenders that St. Stevens has, I think it might be pretty hard just to just shoot it from right here and, and with the pockets aren't deep enough I, I think to get to get any enough power whip on the yeah. ball yeah yeah so not currently has a ball no she might just have to take a I don't know so here's I up honestly I think once she gets past this one just shoot the ball she got past her shoot it and 
she might there get she a goes. shot. There we go. Oh. oh. That was probably the best opportunity we've yeah. had in a while. In a while. Since, since that was a, that was a great opportunity. Yeah. And just kind of rimmed out. And that was a great shot too. You know. <laughs> Number five, taking it down down the field Maddie again. Musser. I haven't heard much from her in the second half. Yeah, I mean, sounds to be just all. Seems like she's giving it up. Chloe Lambert. She's giving her teammates some looks. As it seems, I mean, there's no doubt that. You know, coaches want to see her. Oh, uh, somehow we get the ball back. It's in see, our favor. I don't understand the rules of this. Yeah. What did we do <laughs> to deserve that? I'm not mad about it. There's hope, and she's quick. Oh, oh, there's hope. I thought you meant there's hope. Like, there is hope. There's always hope. Oh. And she heard our words. She just pulled it from deep. <laughs> yep. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt to try, you know. <laughs> it's one of the few shots we've had all game. I don't even know if it meant to be a shot. But sometimes you just gotta pull it. Sometimes you just gotta pull it from deep. Yeah, I mean. I say. We haven't put in Alexa Bielo either. We haven't put in anybody. Let's see who. who wow. Symphony James. Symphony Alexa. Alexa. Sims St Weatherby. She got in earlier, I oh. believe. ST. Olivia Vaughn, I haven't seen. Julie, Julie Coffey, Coffey, no. Lola Mason, Mason, no. Dory Foskey, no. Yeah, I mean. Free them from the bench. It doesn't they hurt just to gotta try something. got to stand up the whole time, too. I mean. Let them sit down. If I'm a player. If I'm a player and I'm. I think that's motivation. Why would I have to stand up on the bench? Yeah. Isn't the bench the place to rest? I say, I say you go fight for, for a chance at the game. The game. I mean, with a at score, this point, a score like this, might as well ask the coach, "Can I get in?" Yeah, a score like this, take that hoodie want, off. You might as well walk to the sub box yourself and just walk you, in the game. Say, you, get off the field and walk in the game. <laughs> might as well. And there's yeah. a flag on someone. Someone. You don't. You don't, don't want to just be standing here. Like, I mean, it's really late in the game. Like, not to. Not might to, as well get some run. Yeah, hey, get your get your stats up, get your minutes up. You know, you never know. One of our one of our bench players might put in some type of pain. So here is number twenty one, Chloe Lambert. Oh, we said her name a lot today. Yeah, it's almost engraved in my head. When I remember the the jersey number and the name, yeah. they've been doing something right. Yeah. Or it could mean that they've been doing something really off. I mean, really wrong. Didn't hear that. I don't like to spread hate here. I think I, I don't like to spread hate. I, I would never remember some someone for their pitfalls, but it's always great to remember remember them when they're doing good things. Just like number thirty one for St. Stephen's, number eighteen getting in for the first time today. I like that. I like that. Remember them for doing their great things. Oh, here's a God. pass to number seven. Number seven. Interesting. Okay, and we get the ball. That was not a shot. That was not the shot. But St. Stephen's comes Stevens up with the move. ground ball. I mean. So. Just giving them another opportunity to run the clock. There's 6-12 on the clock. Oh. As soon as we finish this one up, I'm going to go inside. Run some nice warm water on my hands. Yeah. Warm myself up. Have some nice dinner. And then go eat dinner. Yo. There's another shot from Chloe Lambert. I didn't even hear any celebration from St. Stephen's side. Chloe after Lambert that one. has one, two, three, four, five, six, six goals. Yeah, I and mean. Zero assists. Is she being a selfish player? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Yeah. I didn't hear a single celebration after that goal. It was, on, it was almost like that was a given for us. Oh. A card? 
Who is the card on? Why don't they put their hands on that? So does the point go? The point fall? You just heard that there is a card. I think it's Lyle or McCauley or... Yeah. Both of them are in the box. Confusion with the score. So, I mean, confusion or not, it's five night. Did they take it off? Did they put it back? Five forty-seven on the clock. Does it go? Yeah, I mean, that was a bit confusing right there. So. So One, does that? Two, three, four. We only have five defenders. So yeah, I think yeah. Lyle is off. So McCall is just waiting to sub, I believe. I'm not even sure. They did. Oh. Is it 15 to 1 by the way? It's 14. 14. 14. Hmm. It's an interesting sport. These last couple of seconds, I don't understand anything that just happened. I just saw a lot of commotion and a lot yep. of cheering, so. Now it's getting loud. Let's see what the student section's looking like. Looks like some of the track athletes finished up their, their play today and uh, have moved their way to the student section, but. Oh. See if they can stick around to the end of this game, because. We do need some support. Yeah. And what, what I love about our girls' team is that. Here's Lyle. No matter what the score is, no matter how the game's going, they're always like loud, supportive of each other. Like yeah, I've seen. They always are just so happy. I've seen games that they lost after the game. I hear them go like, "That was a really great game." And, and sometimes you always, you sometimes you're like, yeah, sometimes you're "What's their reason to be happy for?" But at the end of the day, what's what's their reason to be sad for? You're playing yeah, your clean. favorite sport. I'm from all these people in a great stadium. Yeah, it's a varsity sport, too. No. And just engaging in some fun competition. Yeah. A lost game doesn't... No. It's it's definitely tough. It will be, like... Yeah. We always come back from it. It's early season. It's an early, yes. early season game. And hopefully... I'm not sure if there will be a, any type of rematch against St. Stevens. Hopefully in, like... I don't know if we're in, even in the same ISL division. division. Yeah. yeah. But with two minutes left on the clock, we might be. I'm sure St. Stevens would just flip this one around and sit back in this chair and relax, knowing that nothing will happen for the next minute. Yeah. Since they have St. Stevens playing, they're boring, relax. <laughs> How was your day today, Jason? Hmm. I actually had a really good day. Yeah, I had a good day because, well, up until, you know, my math class. Not really. I, I thought I had a class. I thought I had a really good. I thought I had a really good score on my test. I actually thought I had 100, to be honest. Mm. Got it back 77. Hey, off of. I've been there. Off of simple mistakes, you know. But it doesn't mean I don't, I don't get the work. And simple mistakes can kill you, as we've seen today. Oh, we've, uh, we know. Trust. So, two minutes left here. I told you for the next one minute, yeah, I could confirm nothing did happen. And after that minute, look what happened. We picked up this ground ball. Here's Winnie Hughes. Oh, and way. she just launches that one to... Potential shot attempt? Campbell Allen, the ball goes out of bounds. Okay. Yep. Right back to the defense. So St. Stevens, they got back in their half-court set. <sighs> Round the horn. 122. How long do you say that they're going to? I think they're going to take a shot oh. at 37 seconds if we have, if they have the ball. Oh, yep, they have the ball. Yeah. Uh, there's 109. They're going to take a shot with 21 seconds on the clock. Oh, uh, yep. And they took a shot right now. <laughs> it's 101 seconds on the clock. Yeah. And I think they scored. But, but, the refs haven't done anything. 
So oh, it's a penalty. penalty. No goal, no goal, no goal, no goal. Wow. That's what I don't understand. If it's a penalty, but, but I made the goal, why take the goal away? Isn't that basically an N1? No. I guess so. I just want to take a minute as this game is closing down to shout out the crew on today's game. Yeah. First half cameras, we had uh, Davian King, Cameron Conklin. Second half cameras, we had uh, Jacob Castle and Duke Shackelford. And the most valuable player here in the press box today, Max Niven. Clap it um, up. Clap it up for Max Niven. Um, Jason, it's been a pleasure. Yeah. As this game winds down. Game number two for me, you know. What other ones did you do? We did basketball, we did, right? Yeah, we did do basketball, uh, which was really fun. It was nervous. It's good it being nervous. out in a controlled climate. Yeah. Through with five seconds left, I think this one's over. All but over. Oh. Good game, St. Stevens. Great game. I mean. That's the end of the game. Yeah. Fourteen to one. Um. Well, all this leaves wow. is room for improvement. Yeah. Can only go up from here. We'll see you guys next time. Have a great day.